Okay, uh, a lovely morning to, to you all. Amen. We thank God that you could join us. You know, every day that comes forth, be it a Monday, be it a Friday or a Sunday, it is the day of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It, is, it is the Lord giving us grace to have fellowship with him uh, once more. So, um, I know it's, it's, it's a bit difficult when we are um, not all together in the same room, but in different places. But so far, God has given the grace and we've been able to have church despite the difficulties with the connections, despite the difficulties with the, uh, the sounds. We thank God that God has given the grace. Amen. As we begin, shall we just pray together and ask the Lord to, to guide us this morning? Heavenly Father, we come to you. We look to you, O oh God of glory. You are our God and our Lord, and we are your children. You alone, my Father, you have purchased us. And God Almighty, you have called us your own. We thank you. We thank you for this morning. It is not out of our own cleverness. It's not out of our own doing, oh God. But it is because of your love that mighty God we are in here today and we can still gather. It is by your grace. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, we welcome you, Spirit of the living God, to have your own special way, even in our midst. I pray, my Father, lifting every house, mm. oh God, for every individual listening mm. in the name of Jesus. Mm. And for those that will listen later, mm. Lord, we pray, let the spirit of truth mm. reign in the name of, in Jesus. The name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are wisdom mm. and you are the counselor. May you minister your word today unto our lives. Yes, oh God. May you teach us the truth. Yes, oh God. May you, O oh God, reign among us. Mm -hmm. We surrender our lives to you. We ask of your forgiveness, my Father, mm. of the wrongs we could have done, my God, mm. knowing or unknowingly. Yes, oh we repent. I stand in the gap, my Father, and mm. repent on behalf of your people mm. and indeed on my own behalf, mm. asking for grace and mercy. Yes, oh that, Lord, let the blood speak over our lives. Let the message of the Lord that are new every morning mm. be made new over every soul in the name, in the name of, Jesus, of Jesus. Yes, oh God. For those that are not well, I pray, my Father, for the grace of healing. Mm. May you touch us as we minister the word, yes, oh as we sing songs of praise and worship. Yes, oh God. May you restore our bodies. Mm. May you perfect us in the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. We look up to you as our God. Mm. We lift our hands to you as a sign of surrender. Yes, oh and we say, Lord, have, have, your, way. Way. have your way. Holy Spirit. Have your way, Spirit of a living yes, God. Oh God. We enter your courts by the blood. Yes, oh we God. enter your presence by the blood. Yes, oh and God. as we enter this morning, mm. we choose to enter with a song of praise. Mm. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Mm. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Can we turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israels from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ it is taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who are with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is 
the Spirit. 17. Now the Lord is Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness. The veil has been taken away. Amen. When we look into His Word, the Spirit reveals Christ to us. The Bible says in John 1.1 1, 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Mm and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. It is that Word that transforms us. It is that Word that renews us. When we contemplate, when we reflect on the Word. So today, let's contemplate. Let us focus on, on Jesus today. Let us not only read His Word, but let us meditate on Him and lift up our praises. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Let us praise him today that he might inhabit our praises. Let us forget the former things and look to Jesus who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think of. He is not man and neither is he limited by, by, by flesh and bone and pain. He is God who is able to do great and mighty things in us and through us. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. Are we ready to receive the word of the living God today? Amen. Thank you. Today I will share one of the words that to some may be known or may attempt to be one of the most boring sermon. But I pray that you'll be ministered to. Amen. Amen. It's not a word that may appeal to most people. And just to put on the record, this could be the last word you hear in this, in, put in this way. You know? You know, we are living in times that are very interesting. And the Bible over and over reminds us to encourage one another. Amen. The Bible would say, encourage each other with these things. Encourage each other with these words. Amen. <clears throat> I've titled today's word, The Day is Approaching. The Day is Approaching. This is not the word that I wanted to share. <laughs> As usual, I have a word and then suddenly I feel like, mm, let's detour. I think my family may understand. Yesterday I did hint a little bit about what I wanted to share. But as God may have it, this morning something came up upon my heart and I completely did a detour. And uh, in the fullness of time, I'll share that other word again. It's, it's prepared somewhere. So today I feel like this morning, this is what God wants to say to the church. Who is the church? Us. Who is the church? Us. And this is what I believe God wants to say to the church. Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verses 23. And the Bible records, Let us hold fast the profession, the profession, I'm reading from the KJV. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, just like we are doing right now. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, 
there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and uh, uh, what's the word there? For judgment and fairy indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Amen. Amen. Now, the writer of Hebrews is not exactly known. There's been some disputes of who wrote, others have said it's Paul, because sometimes it, 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 it does correspond with some of the things that Paul had said. And the scholars have said, no, it's not Paul. They have attributed to different guys, to, to uh, Luke. It has been attributed to um, Barnabas. D different, different people. But what the scriptures are saying here is interesting. It is believed that the book of Hebrews was written somewhere about 96 A.D. That is about 96 years after the death of Christ. Okay? Now, he is talking to the believers. And he is saying, as we see the day approaching. Okay? Which day is approaching that he was talking about? The return of the Lord. Amen? Amen? The return of the Lord. Now, when you read Acts chapter 1 and verses 9, you may not turn there, you can trust me. Acts chapter 1 and verses 9 through to 11. The Bible records, the Bible records that there was a time after Christ had appeared to the disciples for about 40 days and there came a point when he was about to ascend and in chapter in verses 9 the bible records that whilst he was still speaking to them Christ ascended into heaven amen and when Christ ascended into heaven the disciples that stood there were wandering and looking up and an angel came and said, This Christ, what, what, what are you looking at? And they said, I mean, it looks like I mean, Christ is gone. Because they kept guessing, what, what's happening here? But there's one statement that the angels said. And they said, the same way you see him going up, is the same way you see him do what? Coming back coming down, descending. Amen. Now, when Christ left and when the time of, 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 of the book of Acts was written by Luke, it was somewhere about 62 AD. So, 62 AD, they see Christ, uh, the, 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 the truth is written about Christ ascending. About 30 years later, 96 AD, the writer of Hebrews says, as we see the day approaching. Amen? Now the day is approaching that time. How close is this day that is approaching to you and me in our time? This is almost 2,000 years from that time. If you want to calculate, probably 1,900 plus. How close is this day approaching? Amen? Now, here is the reality. After God created man, man fell as we all are aware. And as time went by, God chose one man, Abraham, and began to deal with Abraham and his sons, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Jacob, as we know it, is changed, his name is changed to Israel and becomes a father of the Jews. Amen? Deliberately, God has picked a people that he is dealing with. Anyone else, when you read the book of Chronicles chapter 1, you see the genealogies that have been laid there, and you can see so many people coming out of, of from Adam all the way to other children that were born later. But of all those, you see God only picking who? Abraham. Then he goes to his son Isaac. Then he goes to Isaac's son Jacob. So he is dealing with a people who in turn are now called the Jews or Israel as we know it. Amen? And as he dealt with them, the Jews were likened unto an adulterous woman. Because several times God will say, I am like your husband, or I am your husband. And they liken them unto like a wife. But time and again, they left God and went to save foreign gods, likening it as unto a woman going after other men, a, a married woman going unto other men. And God was faithful regardless. He would punish them, but he would still bring them back because he had a covenant with Abraham. And when you read Jeremiah, I think, 30, God saw to say Israel will forever exist. As long as the sun and the moon remains, the heavens, and Israel will forever exist. And as life may have it, when you read Jeremiah, in the book of Daniel, apologies, Daniel had a specific prophecy to Israel. When you read Daniel chapter 9, a word is given by angel Gabriel where he gives a period of time of 70 weeks. Amen? And this was a time frame of which where God says, okay, fine, I will deal with you for this particular period of time. And in hoping that in this period of time, Israel may reform. But the, but the angel Gabriel, when he delivered the message to, to Daniel, he was very clear to say, at some point, Messiah will come and he shall be cut off from his people. Amen. The day is approaching. And true to the word of the Lord in Daniel, Messiah did come. And as the scholars have tabulated, which is the book of Daniel is a bit interesting to interpret. Different stories come out and different schools of thought. But there's one understanding. God put a stop after the killing of Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ died, God momentarily put like a stop, not forgetting Israel completely, but now opened a new chapter to what you and me know as the church age, where you and me now have the privilege to be saved and become children of God. Because before that, it was not for the Gentiles which is you and me. It was not for any other person, but it was only for this chosen group of people that God was dealing with. But after the death of Jesus Christ, a new chapter opened. And that is what we call the church age, where you and me now have been able to enter through uh, through the, the kingdom of God. Come with me to Matthew 21, reading from verses 33. As always, I've always said I like long readings because it creates context. 
So this must be understood from the context that Christ is speaking in parables. Every time Christ was about to deliver a teaching, he started by speaking not directly, but indirectly using a parable. Amen. We'll read from verses 33 to 40, and I'll let my wife help me on that one. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a winepress in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went out on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the, the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied. And he will rent the vineyard to the other servants who will give him his share of the crop at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. So when you read Daniel chapter 9, and particularly verses 24, where the angel Gabriel speaks to Daniel and says, 70 weeks have been given to Israel. It is widely believed that 69 weeks were fulfilled. There is one week remaining for God to still deal with Israel. Now, the book of Daniel, like I said, is very, it's, a, it's a very interesting book. I want you to hear something that is very, very interesting. There are so many prophets that came to the people of Israel, to the Jews, whom they stoned or killed. Amen? So many prophets were sent unto them. They rejected the word of God or the prophet was killed. The prophets were killed. Until finally, God chose to send who? His own son, Jesus Christ, to them. And just like the word of the Lord had come through the prophet Daniel, that he shall, the Messiah shall be cut off, when he appeared unto them, they did not believe in him. They rejected him. And what did they do? They connived together with the Romans and Christ was hung on the cross. And it's similar to what we just read in Matthew 21. And this was Christ himself giving this parable and the teaching of how a man planted a vineyard. And when he planted, he even put a wine press and built a hedge around it and put men to take care of the vineyard. But when time came for him to go and check for the fruit, every time a messenger went, they killed. God is looking for the fruit. Yes. But they killed the messenger. And every time God spoke to Israel, he, was, he wanted to see the change of heart, the fruit in Israel. But they killed the messenger. But when Christ came and died, that was it. Of the 70 weeks declared, was in the 69th, and one week remaining, God put a stop dealing with Israel directly in terms of their salvation and opened unto, unto the church. Now, when you go down just within the book of Matthew, Come down to 22, Matthew 22, reading from 8 to 10. So 
from the beginning of 22 itself, just from about verses 1, that's where the story starts. But we will cut it going down just to verses 8. And the Bible records, Then saith he to his servant, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highway and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was finished with guests. Hallelujah. And the wedding was finished with guests. When you read from the beginning, it is a story where there is a wedding and then the owner prepares everything, choice meat and fatlings. And when he calls for the people that he had invited, which is again a representation of Israel, they refuse to come. So the owner goes like, it's fine. Can now you servants go out there and pick anyone who is willing to listen and bring them so that they can do what? Come and enjoy the feast. This is similar to where yourself and myself are able now to tap in into the salvation of God. Not necessarily that God has forsaken completely Israel, but he has just put a pause to let the Gentiles do what? Come in. Okay? Now, the day is approaching. Let's not forget that. So, in this case now, we see that salvation has been given to the Gentiles. Now, it's from the time Christ ascended into heaven. We are talking almost 2,000 years today. People have heard the word. The word has been preached. And Christ promised to say, I will return. I will return and uh, pick you. Where I am, there you will be with me also. If it was not so, I'm going to my father to prepare a place. And he says, if it was not so, I would have told you. Amen. So there is a window that has been opened for the Gentiles, which is yourself and myself, any non-Jew, black or white, Indian or Chinese, black, you can name them. As long as they are able to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and accept the gospel, they can come in. But this open window is limited. Romans 11 verses 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part, underline that word, blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Amen? So, that blindness that we see today on Israel, where they, are, they did not believe that their Messiah came, and they are still looking for a Messiah, it's like a partial blindness which has happened in part. And their blindness has opened a door to you and me, the Gentiles, to come in and be grafted in to the commonwealth of what? Of Israel. Because initially he was just dealing with Israel, but now he became gracious, poured his grace, and allowed everyone to come in. But this window is going to close at some point. Now, that is the danger for us as a church. Because this invitation that we have 
is limited. At some point, it will come to an end. It is open to everyone, of course, but it seems to have a time frame which no one does what? Knows. Amen? No one knows. But this opening is still there. Now, the reason why when you read scripture, after the Lord appears towards the end time, or before I go there, let's go to Ephesians 1, before we go to Thessalonians. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 3, 13. So, Romans is talking of until the fullness of the Gentiles have what? Come in. Okay? And then there is something that is very unique about we the believers with this what we call salvation. The Bible records in Ephesians and it says, verses 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation. In him also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen? Amen. So, these Gentiles or non-believers whose door, where, when the door has opened for them to come in, God has put his spirit upon each and everyone as a seal or as a deposit that we are his. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And this deposit, this spirit is an assurance that we have been purchased by God. Now, the spirit of a living God which is currently dwelling in you is the one that convicts men of their sins, causing us to do what? To repent. Now, once the fullness of time has come, you and me, who are the church, this window which has been opened, there will come a point when this window will close. And once that window closes, the Spirit of God, which convicts us of unrighteousness, that reminds us that what we have done is wrong, that causes us to call upon the name of the Lord, and which resides in us as the deposit, when that time comes, once the church is removed from here, even the spirit of a living God, because it dwells in us, will be moved away from here. And if you understand, back in the time before Pentecost, the spirit of God was a preserve of the few people, prophets, priests, and those that God chose to put his spirit upon. Now I want you to understand very, very carefully why I'm speaking like this. Your salvation today is because of the Spirit of God. It's because the Spirit has quickened you and by grace, by the grace of God, you have said yes. Amen? Come with me to Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from 16. And the Bible records, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so shall we be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. The day is approaching. The coming of the Lord is at hand. There is so much going on. And when you look around, you, if you have the spirit, you can tell to say, we do not have much time. The day of the Lord is at hand. Because when God put a bit of a stop or a pause with dealing with Israel, he scattered them. And they were scattered to different nations. And it, when the Romans reigned in Israel, there was, the temple was destroyed. Israel was not a nation until as late as 1948. In our time, Israel has been established as a nation again. Just like God had promised and spoken through the prophets, they have been gathered back to the land and they are now a nation and they are flourishing. They are established. It has been 70 years from the time Israel has been a nation. Why is that important? Because they were scattered all over the world, it was in conformity with the prophetic way that was given that he shall scatter them. And God dealt with them in that way. Now that he has brought them in his place in the land that he promised, I believe and I trust that we do not have much time left. The day is approaching for the return of the Lord. For that one week of the 69 weeks that have been done, the one week that has, is left where God deals specifically with Israel is soon and is at hand. Now why is this scary and why is it dangerous? The problem is that when that day comes, only those with washed robes, only those that are, are living according to the will of the Father, only those that have said yes to Christ in truth will be caught up and meet the Lord in the heavens. And the Bible records that first those who died in the Lord first, and us who are alive will be caught up with him in the heavens. What message does that word send to a believer? What message does that send to the church? Get ready. Prepare. Get ready. Prepare. As long as it is called today, get ready, prepare. We don't know when it will be, but when you look at the signs, Christ says, when you look at the fig tree, you see it blossoming, you know that summer is about to come. When you look at this world today, and look at the things pertaining, you can tell to say, we are coming towards the end of life and matters as we know them. The day of the Lord is approaching. And that cause for your heart and my heart to be well positioned and being ready to receive the Lord. Indeed, no one knows the time, 
No one knows the hour. But I can tell you, we don't have time. Let's go back to the scripture we opened with. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for our sin, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fairy indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Hallelujah. If we don't hold fast our profession, this is our confession in the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know when that day will be. If we continue sinning willfully, we don't know what, when that day will be. That day is approaching. Especially that we know the truth. There is no more any other sacrifice. There is only one sacrifice in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is it. There won't be any more sacrifice. Now, why was I talking about the Spirit of God being a deposit in us and Him being an assurance for our salvation? Once the church is lifted on what is commonly known as rapture or the taking away of the church, the Bible says we will be caught up, which is the word our puzzle, being caught up in the heavens. When the church is taken away from here, the spirit of a living God will be taken out of this place. It will be going back as in the days of Israel. When it will be works and believing like on the law. It's not easy. We are a church which is privileged because we are living under grace. The grace of God allows us to enter the presence of a living God. For us to pray, for us not to be condemned because of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Once we, the church is out of here, trust me, we should pray that we will be in that first batch of the people that are being taken out of here. Because if you remain on this land... The Bible records there will be a man of lawlessness that is coming. Even when God will be purely dealing with Israel, even when the two witnesses will come, they are not coming to Rome, they are not coming to, to Europe, they are not coming to Africa. They will be coming to Israel because God would have rekindled the period that he had paused, the, seven, the, the last one week, the 70th week to deal with Israel, that they may believe in their Messiah. And because Israel did not believe in the first Messiah, they will believe on this man that shall come falsely as a, an antichrist. Amen? And when he comes, they will believe. The first three and a half years will be okay. The last three and a half years will be wicked years. Amen. We don't want to be caught in that. Therefore, as the day is fast approaching, reposition your hearts. Set your hearts right. 
for once this chance is gone, we don't know when the Lord is coming. We may be found wanting. If we are wavering or if we continue to willfully sin. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Shalom, shalom.